Hey everybody, so um, it's been a minute and I tried to put this video together earlier. It just took me a long time to finish this PowerPoint and actually sit down and be able to record this. Um, I'm not going to go as long as I planned on originally. Uh, I wanted to kind of go into uh, recursion and iteration or iterative uh, functions, all sorts of different things. Um, but instead, I'm going to show you this Python script, which I think is really cool. And um, I'm going to I'm going to briefly go through this PowerPoint. I'm not going to go through the whole thing. Uh, it's mostly just a resource. I wanted to make sure that you guys could use it if you wanted to, or just be something as a reference uh, for using recursion. And so. Uh, if we look at it, um, this particular script is going going to allow you to click a start and an end, and then it's going to route through a particular system. It, you know, it doesn't have to be uh, HVAC systems; it could be electrical or plumbing. Uh, in this case, we're going to be looking at ducts. But you click on a start and then an end, and it'll loop through and figure it all out, and then return those elements. Um, and so there's a few functions. There's one for getting the connect the connectors, which is going to tell us like what elements it's connected to, and then there's the actual uh, path function, and so that's this find path one, and it's pretty simple really, uh, and it uses recursion. So you can see this is the function right here we're defining it, and then down here is actually uh, it's being used again. So recursion is a sometimes memory intensive thing because it's it's sitting there consuming a bunch of um, processes because it's it, it, depending on how much you have to nest into a certain system like uh, a duct for the most part shouldn't be terribly complicated but if you've got um, pipe that goes up multiple floors and it also loops back into each other you could accidentally have a whole bunch of, of functions all open up at the same time and then that could cause an issue that's why you may want to use an iterative uh, function but it kind of depends on what you're trying to do this was more for fun I accomplished this with a um, iterative function but I wanted to see if I could also do it with a um, with a rec recursive function and I wanted to make sure, I wanted to get a grasp on it, so I really understand them, and now I think I do, and that's why I created this this presentation. So feel free to use this; it'll be on GitHub with the Dynamo script. Check both those out, uh, and it'll walk you through kind of the different the different things we've got our um, different uh, variables that we're using, our different list, and then um, I actually. Uh, break this down, this visual uh, ductworks here, uh, kind of break it down piece by piece what it's, ha what's, what it's doing. So if we kind of scroll through this, you'll see that it's continuing to open up more functions, then uh, it returns none, goes back, and then continues down the path. And it opens up more, and so that's where you could see like it could it takes a lot of uh, processing to open up all those. So if you've got a really big system, and a lot of times, um, well, I don't want to say a lot of times, but in Python, if you have a recursive function and it it you know goes through a bunch of time, I think it's a hundred times, it'll error out and say, hey, you know, there might be a a loop here or something. Because uh, it's, you know, it's not going back. It's just continuing to open up more functions. So eventually you could crash your computer, potentially. Um, but anyways, this kind of walks you through it and then shows how it closes each of those uh, functions until you return the actual result, which is the path. So please check this out if you want to kind of walk through it and check, you know, just see how it you know, visually try to see uh, what's going on. Um, that's what I, I made this for. I don't want to go through it because it's like 30 slides. And, and frankly, it's just really redundant. 
It's just literally using the same function over and over again until it gets to the end, which is the uh, base case, and then it's going to return and close out the, uh, the recursive function, and then you'll get your, your output. Um, and then this was a good YouTube video related to recursion, so definitely check that out. Uh, that'll be in this, this PowerPoint. And then definitely join the Discord. The link is below in the description. So anyways, this is the, the PowerPoint, but let's actually take a look at the script. So this is it. There's two inputs. Um, I've got this note here just so that you guys, so we can highlight really quickly the, the selection I've made in Revit. And then just for fun, there's some length stuff for pulling together a, a length. So I'm going to bring this over here and then I'm going to do a start. Okay, I'm going to do that element. It actually should be already selected, but just to make sure. And then we'll do this in cap there. I want to bring Dynamo up a little bit. Click run. You'll see that it isolates those elements, which is pretty cool. And uh, if you turn this script into like a production script, you could have an input that says yes or no. Do you want to isolate this system whenever you're running your, your test or whatever? And uh, which could be a really cool UI thing for, for the users that, that would run this script. Um, so there's that. And then I'm going to pan over in Dynamo. And you'll see that we've got 52 feet of, of duct um, in our... Uh, system there, which is which is pretty cool. So if you wanted to sum up, you know, uh, a certain route of pipe, excluding like connections or like fittings, then this thing could potentially help you do it. And what's really cool is, like, in this case, maybe I'm trying to calc the different conditions. So I want to get this induct, but I want to calc all of them. Well, potentially, what I could do is pull all the information out related to this duct use this start point um, or even get really smart and use the location so I could use you know this um, this uh, HRU um, piece of equipment and then uh, start from there and then kind of route out and return this group you know this start and then end at this end cap and then again from the start to this end cap um, and even this one over here, return all those, that would reduce, there would be no selections, no start or end selections, you could do that, but anyways, this one is, um, this one was a lot of fun, and like you saw in the presentation, it was pretty, pretty straightforward, it was not a very complicated recursion, um, or, you know, it, it's not a complicated function, and there's two of them, so you've got your get connected elements. So whenever it's looping through there, it's just returning the elements. So if you've got a fitting, like a T fitting, and it's going into it, it's going to return two other elements, the two other connected elements into that T, and then you'll go either down one route or the other, go down it. If it's wrong, you'll come back, which you saw in the presentation, or you will see if you if you want to kind of take a deeper look. And then uh, the other direction, you know, you go down down that route. So that helps just grab the elements. And then this find path function is the actual re recursive function. So. Um, I have never really used recursive functions other than maybe a, meh, I used it a handful of times, but a long time ago. This was a fun opportunity to do it because I knew that it, it could be used, uh, but it's not something that is super common. And really, I, I don't know if there's like a benefit to using it in this situation but it was fun to build and feel free to download it and kind of use it however way you want um, and let's go ahead and just do another selection so I'm going to do start we'll do I don't know we'll do that that same unit um, and then we'll just do here Click run, you'll see that we get those connections. Reset. 
and now let's change or actually let's keep that start and then change the end so it I mean for such a simple function it works really well and um, but anyways that's it that's all I've got just pretty quick you know let me know if you want me to go into more detail relate you know, into recursion and how this is working um, if you want me to go through that presentation I will uh, it took me a while to put to put the thing together but I think it's a really good resource and you can kind of see how it's going through and figuring out the routes um, and so I hope that it if you do use it I hope it's helpful but that's all I've got check this stuff out on github and thanks a lot for watching